right, guys, welcome back to La Cancha, and what a week we have. We saw a great final. Like the, the term final usually goes around in in Spanish football a lot, but this had the definition of a final, a felt final. We're talking about El Clasico, and as we all know, Barcelona won it. So sí! Yeah, sí! yeah, 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 they did. They did win it. Shout out Cristiano. Oscar, how are you feeling? Very, 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 very happy. And also very, very emotionally drained because the last 10 minutes, when I thought Asensio scored, I was absolutely devastated. And then when Kessie scored, the complete opposite of absolutely <laughs> devastated. So I'm quite emotionally drained right now. Yeah, and, and this this goes on the theme with Barcelona in that they've been so dominant in La Liga. And right from the get-go, I felt they were the better team. They were the team that... They had a couple of shots against Coutoir, and then the goal comes out of nothing, but they were resilient in that first half. Yeah, I felt like at for a while in the first half, we kind of stopped thinking creatively, you know, just spamming crosses from anywhere. But then as the half progressed, we started getting smarter with where we were crossing the ball from, and I think that led to the goal we scored. But yeah. After the goal, Real Madrid scored went in. I was like, okay, we're playing well, so definitely we'll get one at some point. We just have to not let our heads sink in. Thankfully, they did that. Yeah, I was really impressed again, once again, with Rafinha because he keeps on playing really well. It seems like with Dembele gone, he has all the confidence in the world. He gets a run of games, and he, look, he looked a really good player today. Like He was taking on players. He was doing really well. This crossing was still left a lot to be desired, especially from corners, but I think we're seeing more of his progression and maybe next season we're going to see the real Rafinha that Barcelona fans expect. Yeah, hopefully. But the one right now, while he can have some frustrating end products, I thought he had a really good game. And like you said, he's really grown into the role of um, Dembele's competitor this year. And with Lewandowski being in poor form, <laughs> As we said, the fact that Rafinha is stepping up has been huge. Yeah, Lewandowski is allowed for an open Pichichi race. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but with Lewandowski not playing well, like there was no there was no need for that because we got a couple of unusual goal scorers. First of all, Sergio Roberto, like that was a brilliant finish. Yeah, really composed finish. I, I just saw Javi's post match interview where he's like, you know, he was thinking, okay, Roberto or Kese, who do I pick? And then both of them end up scoring and contributing to the game. So he looks <laughs> like a genius. But yeah, yeah, I felt he can, his inclusion was very needed because out of all our midfielders, he's the closest one to Pedro in how he like, interprets football. The ability to carry it out like Pedro is obviously not there, but the interpretation was important and it was in the right place at the right time, thank you. Yeah, and speaking of new signings that at first we doubted why they were signed, but they're doing really well. Frank Kessie, he did really well in the last Classico, and in this Classico, he got the winner. I think this is his first La Liga goal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's his first La Liga goal, and he got the goal that he should have gotten against them two weeks <laughs> ago, but he set him and robbed him. <laughs> hey, he what on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. And, and now with this goal, it's like with the way the Barcelona fans, uh, the coaching staff, the team celebrated, it felt like the league is won, and the league is possibly one for Barcelona. What's what's the objective for them? Is it just to liberate their playing style a bit or continue uh, trying to get the ones grinding one zero results? At least it wasn't one nil today. There was a yeah. bit of excitement. Uh, yeah, I feel we have to evolve the playing style more and just you know keep the consistency. And what most teams end up doing when they like have won the league at this point or something like that, is that they kind of, maybe because they're focused on the Champions League or whatever, their league form towards the end drops. I mean, those games don't matter, but in a way they matter. Like, you can't understate how important continuously winning every game is. So yeah. my hope is that we keep winning until we officially win this thing because it's not over. Yeah. And do you think they can go for the 100 points, Barca? 100 points? Yeah. One game at a time. Let's, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, another player to highlight who is a 3D is Christensen, and he's been superb since he came into the club. Like, he's done really well. 
Um, how much do you think his injury and the injury of Arao affected Barca towards the Champions League period where they were out of the Champions League in those two games against Inter? Yeah, I mean, when you see that the options without them were Eric Garcia and the PK who was about to retire, <laughs> very much. Honestly, I wish like this Champions League goes into impact and there was like the normal spacing. But and I also wish that there was this stupid French that got around who injured. But, you know, you can't some things happen in football. Injuries are part of it. You have to deal with them. And I'm glad that two of them have been really available since then. And I thought Christian Sim was really, really good today. Araujo, he had I mean besides the on goal. Vinny actually got the better of him a few times today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was an interesting twist to the battle. Like, okay, Araujo is not exactly kryptonite, but yeah, yeah. Christensen really kept Benzema and anyone else correct. Yeah, it really did. And for Xavi right now, like, he's on the way to his first um, major trophy. He's won the Super Cup, but um, I think that's a minor trophy, in my opinion. Um, but what does this say, like, for him going forward? Because now he's he has the league almost in his back pocket. What should Barca fans expect from him next season? Because the league is one, but they have to improve in Europe for sure. And for the sure. in Europe isn't what Barcelona fund is playing. Yeah. I feel you know, on the European front, I'm expecting a lot, not just from Javi in how we approach games, but from the players as well. Like some players, like Rafinha is doing that now, but I need to see more from Ferran, from Fati, from them belly sometimes like I, you need to see more consistent end product from the forward players because that contributes a lot to like a successful European campaign like last season um, it was Vinicius's amazing output that helped Benzema and Rodrigo sometimes Asensio sometimes so we need more of that from our side yeah yeah I'm gonna pass it on to Tapiwa and Taps I, I felt Roma dribbler a bit Lacking until closer to the end of the end of the game, until when Carlo Ancelotti brought on Tremini, he brought on Ceballos, then we saw a Real Madrid that attack. But before then, like I thought, they were too conservative for a game. Maybe they needed to win more, or is it just Barcelona's superiority that hampered Real Madrid? I think it was a bit of both, because uh, I do have to give credit to Barcelona. Their pressing was really good from the first minute onwards. And then from us, we played the same 11 that uh, uh, that played against Liverpool. And I think the mistake that Carlo maybe made is he should have probably dropped one of Cruz and Modric. Because although Cruz and Modric, we've seen when they can channel themselves in the bigger games, I don't think they can do it back-to-back in sort of, you know, big games. I, I would have preferred to see uh, maybe Ceballos starting. Yeah. Uh, but I think he ended up making the right changes because we saw when the changes came on. Uh, the Real Madrid midfield looked completely different, but unfortunately, it was a little bit too late. Yeah, it was, and I, I wonder how you felt when the Asensio goal went in. You must have been like, "This is the moment we won the class goal." No, I was happy, but I was more so happy just about about my score prediction. <laughs> like I was <laughs> laughing with Oscar because I predicted a two one to Madrid, but I thought, okay, there we go. There's the two one, uh, and then they ruled it offside and. It was correct call uh, to call it offside because those margins are, you know, the margins are painful, but they're very correct. So I think ultimately Barcelona dominated. So they did do more than enough to win the game, especially there was like a period in the middle of the game where Barca was just getting chance after chance. And you had like the Lewandowski overhead, the scissor kick, all sorts of chances. So I think ultimately the deserved winner won in the end. Yeah, and, and we talk about Lewandowski, who's having trouble scoring, but Karim Benzema, he's, I believe he's only scored six or something from open play in, in the league. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there, is there an issue? Yeah, is there so. a Karim Benzema problem with Real Madrid? No, I don't even think there's necessarily a Benzema problem. I just think he's got a lot of minutes in his legs. And unfortunately, because we don't have a direct backup, well, like, like for like we have Mariano and then we have uh, young Alvaro, but. I think the over-reliance on Benzema means we're going to constantly keep running him into the ground. So, like, even for today, I would have preferred to maybe have him on the bench since we know he's carrying an injury. Yeah, I probably would have started Rodrigo at nine, but I think Carlo will always uh, tr- trust his his veterans more. So, at the end of the day, it was it was a call that he had to make. 
Uh, but now that the gap goes to 12 points, hopefully we see Benzema, uh, we see Modric rested a little bit more in the league. And so I, I want to see the young Bucks given uh, more of a chance in the league now. Yeah. Is there a need to go into the market for Real Madrid though, to fill that position? Because I'm sure last season everyone thought Mbappé was going to come in and he was someone who could step in centrally or in any place along the front three. But with what we're seeing with Benzema, which is he's still he's still brilliant, but I think we're seeing a bit of a decline that might yeah. get worse next season. Yeah, I think from now on he's going to start declining. He he's still going to show his good levels, but of course you know age takes its toll on on all of us, and I think. You're correct on the, the Mbappe thing is that essentially I think the the big plan from Florentino Perez was to bring in Mbappe and have Mbappe as the third piece in that attack. So it sort of prevented us from getting a right winger and also a direct uh, substitution for Benzema, ever since Jovic, that is. So I think Madrid is caught between two minds where they don't really want to get another young striker in because then you could have another Jovic situation, right? If you bring yeah. in someone who's young, who needs minutes and then they aren't able to get those minutes or alternatively what I would have done if I was in charge, I would have brought a, a more senior veteran type of striker. Right. So yeah. someone like a, a Jekko, Jekko was the example that a lot of people brought up in the summer. Right. So not necessarily Jekko himself, but any profile of a, a veteran striker who you can bring in off the bench and the, the missed opportunity I think we had this summer, if I was in charge, I would have gone for El Comandante. Uh, on a free transfer. No way. I, I thought you were going to say Gabriel Jesus. Yeah, nah, I, I would have taken Morales easily <laughs> on a free transfer. <laughs> nice. That was a, that was, that's a very big call. But is this loss a blessing in disguise for Real Madrid? Because as you said on this podcast before, you didn't think Real Madrid were going to win the title even if they won this game or the chances were slim. But now they can focus their minds more on the Champions League. And in the Champions League, they have an almighty draw because they have Chelsea again and Chelsea, although they are, they've had their issues like in European football, they are quite competent. And if they win that game, they get to play Bayern or City. So it's going to be complicated for them. So just losing out to La Liga, a good sign. Yeah. It's one of those things where of course, as a fan, you don't want it to happen. Uh, but like you mentioned, because the gap was so much like uh, in the middle of nowhere, it was like, are we good enough to chase Barcelona or is the gap going to get bigger? Now that it's confirmed, I think now we'll actually see uh, Ancelotti rotate a little bit more in the league, hopefully. And yeah, now the priority is going to become the Champions League. Because I think, like like you were mentioning the reference from the previous podcast, I think the only time that Madrid was going to smell blood is if the gap got to like within five points. That would have been enough for us to maybe keep chasing. Yeah. But anything beyond five points, I don't think Barcelona is going to drop that many points. Yeah. Do you have an idea on why Real Madrid sunk so low? Because if we look at the start of the season, they had 30, 28 points yeah. from 10 games, from 10 games, if correct me if I'm wrong. And in the next 16 games, they have the same 28 points. Now they are you know, 56. So what was yeah. going on? <laughs> Yeah, this is eerily similar to the last time Ancelotti had to defend his league uh, when he ended up getting sacked. I think for some reason, I don't know, something happened. Like maybe the World Cup break, like I can't really pinpoint like chain tactical changes that happened that like, messed us up. I think it's just a case of us not using our youngsters a lot more. Like I was saying, uh, as much as I love uh, Kroos and Modric and I want to see them get minutes every game, for some of these games in La Liga, I think it would be better served for you to maybe start Ceballos, start Alvaro and whatever, and then bring the veterans off the bench. That way you sort of keep a healthy balance and competition in the squad without running your, your senior players into the ground. Yeah, and I, li- I love Pati Mejia and Chelsea because in Real Madrid discourse, like there's a lot of debates about him. Like Some believe in him, some don't believe in him. Um, what would you do? Would you still keep him if Real Madrid end the season trophy less? Um, I think whether or not we end up trophy less, I think Ancelotti's plan was always to retire because uh, he's always been teetering on the, the edge of mentioning his retirement. But of course, there's an option to extend his contract. So I'm not too sure if he himself, if given the opportunity, will choose to stay. Um, but if I was him either way, I'd, I'd probably walk off into the sunset. 
Yeah. I remember he was rumored to be taking the Brazil job, the Canada job. Um, if I was him, I would go for it. Yeah. Uh, but Brazil the problem is, if I'm Real Madrid, who do you bring in as a coach? Because I think the long-term plans, they want to bring in Raul at some point in time. But yeah. right now, in the interim, I don't think there's a coach out there that would necessarily suit this team. Not even Thomas Tuchel or Pochettino? No, I no. don't. Maybe it's me. <laughs> or Antonio my... Conte. <laughs> yeah, that could be my preference. Again, I don't really like these sort of, you know, short-term planning managers. I yeah. think you you sort of either need a really good tactician yeah. or you need someone who can babysit the squad, which is what essentially Ancelotti was, a good man-manager who can get the best out of both the veterans and the young players yeah. without, like, having drama in the dressing room. I feel like when you now turn to your Tuchels and your Contes, you're going to win a lot of trophies, but you're probably going to blow the team up in three years <laughs> because of that. Yeah, and Conte seems like a very toxic manager at the moment. But I just, want to, I just want to get your opinion on Real Madrid in terms of the Champions League and the Copa del Rey. How do you see that going for them? Do you, you still see there's a chance of them overturning the tie against Barcelona? And how do you see them in that really difficult path? Can it get to the final still? Yeah, I still have faith. In the Copa del Rey, I have a lot of faith. Uh, I mentioned this to Oscar as well last night. That I think we'll overturn that. Um, and I think Barcelona will give them the league, so they'll be able to take that. I, I do hope that in the Copa del Rey, we go all out. And in the Champions League, we go all out. Um, my dream final would be Milan Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe a more realistic final would be Napoli Bayern. I think. Yeah, Bayern. If I was good. being more realistic, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about them towards the end. Uh, but with that, we're going to move on to the next game. Marcus Llorente said that second place is still up for grabs, and Atletico, they, they were really brilliant against Valencia. Adura, um, what have you made of Baraja so far? Um, he, has, he has had five matches so far, and three losses and two wins. Yeah, but well, he strikes me as someone get get that get that phase into a difficult match. Uh, although although that, that was his first match, yeah. but get that phase into a difficult match. I think the the major problem is coming into the team and thinking because we're in a relegation battle, it is a defensive problem. When in reality, Valencia has one of the best defense in La Liga this season. Yeah, twenty eight goals considered, and we're in a relegation battle with twenty eight goals considered. Top. Yeah. 10, I mean, the bottom 10, I don't think anybody has considered less than Valencia. Okay, 31 plus this is 3. I don't think anybody has considered less than Valencia. Then you come in, and the next thing you do is play more defensive football rather than solve the attacking issue. Yesterday, he played the, he played the double lateral with um, Fokia and Thierry Correa on the right wing, benching Samolino for the second game running. Everybody knows Samolino is, is, is our... Is our He's a player with the most spark in Valencia, the brightest player, brightest attacker in that team. Although he doesn't give you um, this thing, he goes or assists, but he creates something with his actions. Yeah. Barra benched him against Atletico Madrid, probably because of fear. But then, and he also benched Andrea Almeida. Yesterday, was, it was a walk in the park for Atletico Madrid. With Griezmann, the type of form Griezmann is on currently, yeah. was just, it was unsustainable for us yesterday. Yeah, so I, I think he's clueless. If, if it does save Valencia, it's a bit because of our own form because two matches, the two matches he won, one one will victories at home. And yeah, the fans behind the team and all of that. But I think it's clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. Damn, those are really harsh words. But I'll, I'll stick up for him a bit because your first games are against, um, I think, Real Sociedad, Barcelona, Atletico, um, Osasuna. And they're they're difficult games to play against. And I know you mentioned Atafe, like they're not the they're not the greatest team, but I tell them they're an awkward team to play against. So what I would hope for him is that he's gotten through the stage and keeping Valencia like still within a chance of surviving. But in the next couple of games, this is where I feel Valencia it's a make or break for Valencia in terms of the relegation battle. If after the game against Villarreal, they're still in this position. I would say Valencia are possibly going down because Valencia have Raya Vallecano next, then Almeria, then Sevilla, then Elche, then Vidali, then Cadet, and Villarreal. 
and these games, they're the games where you're playing against your your relegation rivals, and you have to win it because of the head-to-head that's involved. Yeah, right. especially, especially the game against Cadiz, LJ, and Almeria. Yeah. You, are, you have to get maximum six, seven points in those games. Yeah. There's there's no substitution for that because if you lose against Rari, obviously they are, they are the better team. You lose against Rari, but then you have Almeria. Almeria is in shambles currently, except for the game against Baka. They've lost six in their last seven. Yeah. Cadiz, Cadiz has, has started picking up from, but LJ, yeah. the worst team in the league. If I if I, if I decides to doing this international break period does not learn from his mistakes over the past five matches, then I think there will be a real problem for Valencia going forward. Probably the, the Cavani loss wouldn't have helped a lot in terms of goal scoring. Yeah. But then we have, we have Cavani back and hopefully he doesn't get another injury. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah, you you'd hope so. And even there's a by the lead who are falling like a stone as well. That's there, but they do have Kyle Lauren who keeps on scoring. For fun yeah. and Sevilla at home and Sevilla we know Sevilla away from home they're not the greatest team so I, I see a lot of winnable games there so I, I, w- I wouldn't judge him too harshly on the first couple of games because those are really difficult games but the next I, 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 I don't really think I'm judging him too harshly because I see it is like he, do, he doesn't have he doesn't have the tactical know-how yeah. to manipulate the situation you know yeah, he, he's, is, so. he's more likely doing what 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 he experienced as a player, that's what he's trying to transmit into into the team. Yeah. Not his own ideas, basically, just the block or the defend, you know, and long ball and just <laughs> you know. So I doubt I doubt that will work in the long term, especially when you're only getting home wins and no points away from him. Yeah, that is true. The Almeria one will be something to look out for because like they are they are a dangerous team. I just want to ask you about, um, I'm sorry, they are dangerous to my own, but I want to ask you about Duro because Duro is a guy who was shining for Valencia last season, scored on the way to the Copa del Rey final, scored in the Copa del Rey final, but this season he's been terrible. Like Oscar was right. So like when players do that piano celebration, things don't usually work out for them and it didn't work out for Duro. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, you know what's funny? That, that never, that never, it had never occurred to me. You know? <laughs> the same, the same announcement like Alexis Sanchez, the same exact announcement like Alexis Sanchez. You, you know what? Yeah, Ugoduro last season, big game player, scored in the Copa del Rey final, Copa del Rey um, first first leg quarter final, no first semi final first leg. He yeah. scored in the quarter final, quarter final semi final and final. He scored two goals against Atletico Madrid and Mestalla. To bring us back from 3-1 down, to draw the game 3-3. It's scored against Real Madrid, you know. Big game player, 10 goals, 10 goals in all competitions last season. Then this season comes, he scores a goal, has an, um, an ankle injury, goes off. Then he's back in the team now. Unlucky for him, he's back when we're no longer playing that attractive football that got so proposed. Yeah. So, yeah. on that, on that bar. If, if he was against Athletic Athletic yesterday, it was more it was mainly isolated in front. Yeah. There was no support for him whatsoever. And I don't think a, a striker can can compete or can get goals in that type of in that type of system. He did it, he did it on that borderless, you know. But it's, it's a whole different thing, you know. I, I think it's a whole different scenario from Bodalas and and Barra. Yeah, and I'll, I'll agree with you. Yeah, I'll say in the next couple of games, Valencia have to go for it. Like, the key is, like, Lino definitely has to play and Almeida has to play because Almeida is a guy who I feel if Valencia gets relegated, he's going to go, he's going to go places. Lino as well. And Kipa, definitely. Like, don't bring him back. They're really stupid. Um, so, these players need to start playing and I, I'll, I'll still keep patience. I'll say the next seven games as make a break and Valencia needs to win at least five of the next seven if they survive. And, hopefully. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully Valencia does. But I'm, I'm going to bring in Oscar a bit, talk about Atletico Madrid. And uh, on the brighter side of this game, like we're seeing a really brilliant team. There are 10 games um, unbeaten. Griezmann is... There's an argument to be made that he is the best player in La Liga at the moment. Easily. Yeah, um, yeah, right now he's the best. He's the he's the player I look forward to watching most more than any player on my team. Was beautiful. Was it? 
the time. Are we giving him too much? I love Griezmann, but are we giving him too much credit? I, 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 think, he, I think he meant that. You feel that. like he meant that touch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he meant that. <laughs> he, scored, he scored goals like that before. So. He's, he is. Well, either way, he's brilliant. And, yeah. you know, not just him. Atleti post-World Cup have been... Fun to watch, and uh, yeah, but thought I never see that. Yeah, they're, they're playing more tiki taka <laughs> than Barcelona. You know? Yeah, I would not say tiki taka exactly, but more they're, they're more exciting to watch. They like make lots of actions, you know, like running into the box to get on the end of one twos and stuff. You have a Mosu <laughs> being the linchpin, linking up everything that end up in the box, creating big chances. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Oscar, do you know how embarrassing that was for me yesterday? Uh, do you know sorry, how embarrassing that was for me Yeah. Oh, by the way, good. You guys, that, that mention with you, good during playing the piano was actually good because I had totally forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Atleti have been really fun to watch. You know, Depay, he missed two chances he should have scored yesterday, but he's coming into his own. We're linking up well with Griezmann. Yorente is doing well. I think. In particular, as they've gone back to the five at the back formation, it's kind of like a hybrid. It's yeah. like helping them score more goals because the players, at least the players understand what they're doing now. Yeah, and, and thing though is like it's very um, tactically flexible because at times you think it's a five, but then when they play, sometimes Carrasco is playing as more of an extreme um, winger and it can turn into like a four four two, like with like not the four four two, it's four center mid, but like the old 442 with like mm-hmm. two wingers, two strikers, and that's mm-hmm. super offensive. And so it's like they're finally getting the message that Chilo is trying to say. But mm-hmm. I have a question. Do you, any of you think they would actually pick Real Madrid for second place, given the fact that La Liga is over, Real Madrid are caring more about the Champions League than Copa del Rey? I don't know. That- I'll answer you better two games into like post international break because. Mm. As much as Real Madrid will probably shift their focus a lot from the league, I still think they'll be too good for a good amount of their opposition. I remains to be seen whether Athletic can really sustain this. Yeah, it remains to be seen, and they do have to go to the Camp to play Barcelona as well, which is an automatic loss at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no, just aside. No, just aside. Kind of. Just aside. If they get a couple of long goals, then yeah. <laughs> yeah but anyway, yeah, I, it's possible. It's possible. Taf was like chapping his lips to say something. <laughs> oh no, no! I was gonna say I kind of, I kind of feel bad for uh, Atleti at the moment now because they've gotten into fine form now, and I actually wish they were still in Europe because uh, yeah. they would have been doing really well. I think. Yeah, it's it's that last month before the World Cup break. Yeah. It feels like the Barcelona situation where Barca had like a really bad period that coincided with uh, when they needed to qualify and then Atleti had the same thing. But if you now take this Atleti team and this Barca team, if you were to put them back in the Champions League, I think they do better than the Milan clubs maybe. The, the thing though is the problem with like Atleti in the last two, actually three seasons, even when one title, they have one part of the season where they're very good. They're excellent. And you're thinking, if they can put this two together, you have a very good team. And we saw that in the league. The first part, they were excellent. The second part, they were bad. And the league last year, the first part, they were quite bad. Towards the end, they were very good. And now we're seeing something like that. So what does it take for them to have like two really good seasons put together and so they can compete for the title and do well in Europe? I was just about to point out the fact that the lack of the, whether they will keep up that momentum in, in regards to what you just what you just explained now. I think the issue is Simeone has, has gone to a, a back five. Now they, they are they are having good form, they are winning teams, this the six goals against Sevilla at home. But you know what's what's going to happen at the beginning of the next season? <laughs> Simone Simeone will try to try to change to another formation. We'll try to bring something new and not continue this this particular formation that has given them good form. Because I think towards the end of last season, it changed to a, a three, a three-man defense. And when, when I think when they lost form, it changed to a three-man defense. But then he started the season with a four-man defense. Wasn't mm-hmm. even getting me. Yeah, yeah. But so like, there's this, there's this lack of consistency around their system. 
yeah, that, that, that is true. And it feels like it confuses the players. But do you think with the losses of Cunha, Felix, not, not to post blame on them, sort of posting shade on them, but like with these players that are gone, do you feel now he sticks to the same thing because he doesn't have to play another style? Like this is, this is the guys that he has and he's going to stick to this formation, whether, whether it works or not. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think that that's another factor that that probably helps with their with their whole change in form and all of that because DP and Griezmann have developed such a wonderful a wonderful relationship on the pitch together and yeah, it helps when it helps a coach when you don't have to change your system constantly to fit in some particular players probably because of the price at which you bought the players or because those players want to play, you know. Everybody is on board with, with this particular style. Marata also has double figures this season and can play in this particular system yeah. ahead of Griezmann or with Griezmann. So it, it makes a lot of sense for Simeone to continue the system and not change. Yeah. Honestly, Memphis Depay is such a brilliant signing for them. <laughs> Barcelona. Very the, brilliant. The, the, the gift that keeps on giving for Atleti. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, know I what Atleti have on us. <laughs> that we keep giving them these gifts. I hope it's not incriminating evidence, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but let's move on to Real Sociedad. They, they got the win against Elche, the basement boys. And Real Sociedad, they're, they're a team that we, we speak about. They're a weird team. They do really well. Sometimes we think they can go to the next level. But in Europe, they still have that wall in them. I think they've not won a European knockout in ages. I, I don't remember when. They've not won in ages. That's all I'll say. But what's the missing link to seeing the Real Sociedad that we're seeing in La Liga doing so well, translating that to Europe? Because against Roma, they dominated in the second line. I think definitely a more consistent goal scorer is needed because while you can say, but Oscar, Starlet has scored nine goals this season. (laughs) Well, yes, but those goals came in like the space of four weeks. It's very streaky. (laughs) <laughs> so you need some more consistent. Well, Oscar, that was very passive aggressive. I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so I got into an argument on Reddit with someone about. So, and it's a different story. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're three shades of me, man. <laughs> no, not, not you. Not, your voice is squeaky. <laughs> do, you, do, you think, do you think it's a lock? Do you think it's a lock issue? Because last season, or I think last season, of the season they got Carlos Fernandez. Yeah. And he went on a long term and got a long term injury, just coming back yeah. a good, off a good season with Granada. Mm-hmm. Then they bought Sadiq this season too. He hits mm-hmm. the ground running for Sociedad and the long term injury, which forced them to get solid. But now Carlos Fernandez is back and I think he's actually scoring goals now. And Oyazabao too didn't start this, didn't start this season. But then with Oyazabao, they had a very good run of form. Well, yeah, it's the same thing as last season. From August to January, Sociedad are very good, very good form. Tempo is high. They are playing beautiful football. But then January comes around and they fall off, probably because of injuries or lack of consistency or a team squad at most. Yeah, yeah. I think probably they have to they have to recruit better and add to their squad. Yeah, especially the wing backs. That's the one area where I keep on. Yeah, yeah. The wing backs. They're not they're, they're not very good in that department, but. Every other part, you might. I think with in the striking department, they just need a fit static. We just we have to see a fit static before we can decide whether mm-hmm. there's a problem there. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know with them. It's they get too many injuries, which is something that's concerning. Because towards the when we were super close to Real Madrid, they got about nine, ten injuries, and we we're talking about how well they can sustain this form. And mm-hmm. obviously, it turns out they can sustain it for that long because when you have that volume of injury players out, it's very difficult to keep it's enough. becoming too frequent though this yeah. is like the fourth season where come january they just collapse like yeah. Yeah, i've lost count now <laughs> I, I hate to do this but i'm going to do this is it a problem with Emmanuel? and because i really like the guy he's a, he's a nice guy he does really well but do they need to change the manager or the way they trained in order to get them to... i don't think i'd put this on the... maybe it's part of the coach's fault but i i wouldn't put it on the coach Mm. Mm. He's brought them this far. I mean, could they? Well, here's the thing. For me, on the list of potential fixes, the coach is pretty low on it. Yeah. And since you pointed out rightly that Sadiq, you know, hasn't been given a real chance, I push the striker replacement maybe medium. 
But quality fullbacks, yeah, they definitely need a lot of those because there's this one real source of that fan on Twitter. If you're listening to this, mm-hmm. shout out to you, but he hates Rico so much. <laughs> <laughs> like his performances. Hey, hey, that I see real source, I have a bad game. I'm like, oh no, Rico's going to get it. So, yeah. yeah well, I think that kind of tells you what they need to invest in. <laughs> And then when yeah, you're giving Rico a three-year contract, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> as Taj mentioned, they, they lack fullbacks. Aside Gorosabio and um, Rico, the only other first team fullback they have is um, I think um Zubel there also. I think Zubel there also deputizes sometimes for Gorosabio, but they don't have a backup playback, except if they bring from society that be yeah. so it's a thin squad, you know, and they have to invest. But probably Emmanuel should think about the training intensity and the amount of injuries they get per season come January and all of that. Probably some things need to change. But Emmanuel is the best coach for them. They can't find any other better anywhere. Mm, that is true. Like, if I'm them, I, I go for Maffei or Arnau, who everyone's, like, hyping about. And maybe on the left back, I'll, I'll try to go for Renan Lodi because I feel, I feel this team will be perfect for him. Yeah, I'd love to hear it be interesting. Yeah. He, he, I was going to say that. something silly about how they can finance getting new fullbacks. <laughs> you know, you have the, there's a there's a very valuable asset you could you know sell to Barcelona for the cost price. I just joking. I just I talk about your uh, Mendy here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's move on to our other European disappointments. Real Betis. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Hard. They're, they're they're already out, so we we can't blame them for anything. Uh, but I think they're keeping the pace with Real Sociedad. Who, who, who do you yeah. guys think would be a better representative and for La Liga next season and Europe in the Champions League? Real Betis or La Real? <sighs> Um, I want to say I think Lariel for the reason and hear me out here's why I think Beth is while they are doing really well right now it's a very old squad and that age can be brutally exposed in Europe yeah. so I feel like they need if Beth is are going to do better and, and Lariel in Europe next year they need to Really freshen up the squad. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Taps, you're about to say something about it. No, I was gonna say I don't trust either of them. I don't know <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> my bet would have been on Rayo. I would gamble on putting Rayo. Um, <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, or what about Villarreal? Because um, I, they, they they were also a disappointment in Europe. It's like losing to Anderlecht, they're the worst. Uh, the big disappointment. They're the worst at the bar. Setien, I, I don't know, man. He, he's on he's on fraud watch. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> it's funny how we didn't even need to talk about this is my <laughs> I just want to say Iglesias is dirty for stealing Sabali's goal. Yeah. That was not nice. <laughs> Sabali was shooting, right? That was Yeah, he was shooting. <laughs> the guy was going on a messy like run and then this greedy pound that takes it. <laughs> yeah, but back to Setien. Yeah. Do we I need saw, to I, too much? I saw, I read, I read a story um, this weekend about how Villarreal are thinking of Michel or Iraola to replace Setien. And I, I very much would think that would be a good idea for them. It should be. It will be a very good idea. I mean, there's no point sacking him now. Just no. wait till the end of the season and then get Iraola. I'd rather see him continue here than go to Leeds or something. Yeah. What if Setien doesn't get them Europe? And uh, that's the thing is, I, I feel I feel they will get Europe because they just have the quality, and it's just the, my problem with Setien is in European football it gets exposed way too much, and that's why when yeah. we went to Barca, I felt that was the wrong appointment if you want to win the Champions League, because when we was at Betis, we saw the same thing happen with Ren, and I feel this is super embarrassing to go out to Anderlecht. Like all, all due respect to the Belgian side, but if you're Villarreal, you're at home. It's your 100 year anniversary. You should. They should be underway. walking the conference league. They were yeah. Adela yeah. I wonder, I wonder from, from, from a fan perspective, I wonder how it should have felt, you know. Last year, you're beating Bayern to go into the Champions League semi finals. <laughs> and this year, you're losing to Anderlecht. 
Uh, Atun. Man, yeah. It's karma. Yeah, it's very <laughs> <humble. laughs> you, you know, you, you know, you have very good points. Last season, they were to be in the Conference League, but because they won the Europa, they went to Champions League and had all that Eriks and all of that. Yeah. I think Setien is, is super lucky to have Chukwese in his team. Yeah, yeah. Is, but, but I, I was going to say something. Yeah. yeah. On Villarreal, if Emery was still their coach, they'd have walked the conference league easily, no question. Yeah. When I saw Setien, I was, I was like, ah, it's not looking good, boys. Yeah, I, I was slightly optimistic about Setien because I was like, you know what, maybe he took the step too far with Barcelona and this team, this is his level. But it's, it's just the, the, this, the contempt he had for that competition is something that I didn't expect because he starts Mandy and uh, and Jorge Cuenca rather than Pau and, uh, and Raul Abiol. And I'm like, this is your chance of winning a trophy in a centenary year and you're not starting your best team to win that. And that's something that Mary would never have done. Like, he's the guy who would kill off the competition. And tactically, mm-hmm. it just fails me. Yeah. yeah, but I guess the only only good thing about Setien is that he's getting more out of someone like Chukwese that yeah. Emery wasn't really doing. But, but to be fair, like when someone like Michel or Iraya like get more out of Chukwese, like yeah. we're gonna we're gonna speak about Raya in a second. But like uh, Isi Palasson is looking like Cristiano Ronaldo or Robin or the second from the Robin. So Iraya can do something. <laughs> yeah. Well, in any case. Mm. Get get at least even though Jared got injured today, I think Morales is starting to look like the old Morales of last season. So I think that plus Chukwueze will be enough to secure them conference league at the very least. Yeah, and that would be in case Athletic doesn't do anything because until a Barcelona former Barcelona manager Ernesto Valverde got Athletic back to winning ways, that's good. That's good. Brilliant, Oscar. Yeah, like he, he was just sco- trying to score as many goals from distance as possible. <laughs> really controlled the game well. He's ha- he's having a really good season. I think besides Sunset, he's probably been the most consistent performer for Atletico because everyone else has had their ups and downs and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, Adore, you want to talk about Inigo Martinez's free kick? Like, walk us through it. <laughs> And the trend of La Liga center backs taking free kicks. I think we led we when Ledrene, when I first saw Ledrene, I think it's Ledrene scored one this season. Yeah, it, I, I don't remember why it's the game. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so yeah, it's called I think it was in the same match. It was in the same yeah. game or something like that. Yeah, I think it was against Yeah, so like it was kind of like a new territory, you know. It's, it's not something that is regular. But they kind of take it very well. They're very good at it, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Probably, probably I'm, I'm, I'm praising them too much. But then, there's this, like, in the Martinez one yesterday, he placed it in between the wall, in between the space between Oscar Plano and, and the wall. And Oscar Plano's deflection took it into the net. But then it was like, oh, probably, like, he knew what he was doing, you know, not just, it was not a fluke. And, like, the whole game yesterday from Athletic Club, and, like, Mikel Vesga, like you mentioned, the penalty, very cool and calm. There was this particular shot at the end of the game where he hits the bar. Beautiful, nasty. Yeah. Controlling and all of that. You know. And I think that's one side of his game where we never really see so much because most of the time he's playing the old him for that. But yesterday, he had, I mean, on Friday, he had Danny Garcia doing that job. So he was like free to do a lot of things and all of that. And he bossed the game. He bossed it very well. Yeah, he really did. And Tata, I'm going to come to you because Athletic, like Real Madrid, they've had a drop in form in the second half of the season. Like, what would you attribute that drop to? Because the, in the first half, they were scoring goals for fun, and they went on this drought. Yeah, I think when they went on the goal drought, um, just not too sure what was happening. Um, and as of all, really kept making changes where sometimes he would play Sunset deeper, sometimes he would play him a little more forward. So I think maybe that inconsistency within the team, you had the whole Munyain uh, saga as well. So maybe that contributed to it, but much like with Real Sociedad, I, I tactically don't know like what I can pinpoint my finger on in terms of what led to the drop in quality. Yeah, and just from a Canadian perspective, Kyle Larin, he he's lit up La Liga, and do you, do you, if by the league go down, what sort of team do you see him doing really well at? Yeah, 
Um, I think, I think it, it would do it like Raya. Raya? Yeah, I was going to say any team yeah. that has a lot of like free scoring attackers, uh, he would come off the bench and do really well. I don't think he'll do well in, you know, like a team that holds possession heavily and that kind of thing. Yeah, no, that is true. Maybe Cavs should go for an FA if Vidal go down. But Juru, watching Vidal, like this makes me more confident of Valencia's chances because I do think they're poor, they're poor side. That's man. cruel. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know what's funny is I lost Valencia lost to Vidal away yeah. at um, yeah. this at the Pusella. Although, although it was it was a ref blunder though, but then they bust the game with Dami Machis, Gonzalo Plata, and Kalarin. You know, that way matches. It was funny. It was funny seeing all of that in a relegation. They're also battling relegation, though. And Valladolid started the season very well. Yeah, they started the season very well. I do not expect to see them in this situation at this point of the season. But they, I think they were the major reason why everyone knew Sevilla were going to have a bad season because they beat Sevilla at home. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, a new team and all of that. But then, Pacheta seems to have failed in getting his team together or being on the same on the same page besides having a good score having a good good scorer like Larry from January and all of that, you know. I don't think I don't think they're on the same page yet. No, they're, they're definitely not. But let's let's move on to a more fun game or we're being uh, really harsh game. today. <laughs> <laughs> an equally an equally fun game with Raya Vallecano and they, they were brilliant. They they looked like Barcelona in the first half and they tried to do the messy as far as penalty kick. <laughs> and I fell off my chair and laughed. Because <laughs> I'm like, you're not that guy. <laughs> you no. But to be fair to AC and Trejo, they scored some really brilliant goals before this. <laughs> yeah, both their goals were really good. <laughs> yeah, two absolute crackers. Huh? And when you watch Jurna, you watch right, you're guaranteed goals. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you we also guaranteed some funny moments like this, but <laughs> Usually, you'd attribute a silly moment like this to Girona and not Rayo, but it, it makes for great TV, you know? Yeah, yeah, it makes for really good fun. And, like, we're seeing a lot of, like, talented, under the rate of players in this game. Like, there was AC with his brilliant goal, Trejo with his goal, and Chigankov, who's come to La Liga almost under the radar, but he's been doing really well. Yeah, I think this is his third or fourth goal since coming in January. Yeah, he's third goal, he's third goal. He's, he's added, like, a lot of end product to um, Jurena's right side. It's just a shame that the goals don't matter in the end because mm-hmm. um, Bernardo and Wampi <laughs> on the other side <laughs> and that Lucas keep messing up. Yeah, like, you know, there's, like, the only team that hasn't scored against Jurena, I believe, is uh, Valencia. <laughs> so, it's your, it's that cool. it, that tells you a lot. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I no 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 I I did score against them first game of the season. Oh, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the only team that's Jordan has kept a clean sheet against is Valencia. Though. Yeah, no, yeah, that's what you were trying yeah, to say. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, very terrible. And I think that was bro. But you know, you know something about Rayo Vallecano. Everybody seems to focus on Isi Palazon or Sergio Camelo at least. But people are ignoring Alvaro Garcia Alvaro, on the left wing. Yeah. Alvaro's yeah. been really good. Like, he, he, I think, I think he, he, wears, he wears black girls every game <laughs> and he's very electric and skillful. Yeah, he's rapid. Very electric. He's rapid. He, he, I think he had double, double figures for goals and assists last season combined. Yeah, yeah. And there's also Frank Garcia on the, wing, the, the wing of the Garcias. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with legend, the set piece taker. Yeah. They're, they're team that... Anti Comisania. Yeah, they can get to, they can get into Europe, right? But I almost feel for Rayo, maybe the best thing for them is not to get into Europe because if they do and they lose a Rayo, like that will be yeah. um, tenable. <laughs> mm-hmm. I kind of agree with that as well because I don't think they'll be able to handle it. But yeah. the neutral in me wants to be selfish and to see <laughs> them <laughs> in Europe just yeah. for the entertainment. Yeah, and honestly, if I'm Rayo and like let's say Rayo has a clause and. It gets paid. I will go for Michel because he's a Rayo based guy. He mm-hmm. plays a similar brand of football, I, I think, or maybe I guess Irala is more like direct than Michel is, but yeah. the same attacking sort of brand of football. And I think that'll make for a good watch with, with Rayo still. Yeah, definitely they should. I, I feel like besides the fact that they'll lose Irala, like just the way Rayo is being presided over. 
<laughs> Europe might be a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bad thing. But will it, be, will it be for Celta Vigo? Because they're in the conversation right now. They're two points off seven. Um, the King and Prince of Vigo, yeah, Glaspas and Gabi Vega, they keep on scoring goals. And yeah, Celta, before they're in a relegation battle, but now I can almost confidently say that they're not. And they should think of better things. Anyone who isn't, hasn't hit 40 is in a relegation battle for a <laughs> you, are, you are two games away from getting out the calculator and saying, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but on, on the phone they're in, it doesn't seem like that way. It doesn't seem like this. I'm glad that the league looks wrapped up now because I do not want to face Aspas and his, <laughs> and his Robin in junior. <laughs> yeah, but they're really, um, Carval has really like solidified their defending and has like brought out the best of not just Gabri Vega, but you have the Latori chipping in with good performances. Even Carlos Perez is scoring now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when he scored, I'll start. You, you, you... Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was, I was going to say, Oscar, do you remember early, early last year when um, Celta Sack could it? I think he said um, it was not the right thing to do. This guy's calling me out. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't, okay, I don't, listen, listen. I'm wrong about the podcast. You know, the podcast based decision. You know, you know something? I was also, I was also, in, I was also in that group. I, I never felt yeah. Celta or find some. <laughs> I thought Celta or find some. Yeah, I mean, I never, I never thought you find someone with an accident. Yeah, I mean, I remember him from his time at Swansea, right? He came in Swansea, like, they just went down, but, like, he, the impression was that they really did well on there. So I thought he would do, like, a solid, you know, mid-table escape at the end because I also felt there are teams worse than Celta in the league. Yeah. But this is, this is really good, and I'm glad to say, hey, I was wrong. I was wrong about Rafinha. I hope I'm going to be wrong about Ansu Fati, but <laughs> it's every game, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah, and, and since we're in the spirit of calling ourselves out, another manager we're wrong about is Diego Martinez. So far, because Espanyol are just one point uh, above the relegation zone, and we thought it was going to be a very good manager for Espanyol. It made sense to fit. Uh, Taps, what went wrong with Espanyol? I think I'm First thing I'll say is he's unlucky. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those games because Jose Lu had, I think, two chances oh, to get yeah. them back in the game as did, well. Did, like did, the... did you did, did you see the cross from Ruben Sanchez? Yeah, yeah. That was, that was beautiful. sorry for cutting you off, but it, but it's just it's just crazy that state. That yeah, no, 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 you're, you're Sanchez... spot on about this. I feel like it was just a game where they could have won it on on a better day. So I I can't even like uh, call it a bad performance from them in terms of the the. The result was bad, but the performance wasn't bad from them, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say. I'll say that probably too. they don't have a good team. Yeah, I, I think the problem with Espanol is their center backs are so poor. So, apart from Montez, so it's like they're always at the risk of these defensive lapses. And in the first half of the season, the goalkeepers were rubbish, both of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For, and. They had Brown Olivian creating chances, but I think he has since gone to, gotten an injury, and there's yeah. no Pedro Sasa. So. Yeah. yeah, the injury problems are, haven't been good for them, but I guess everyone here, apart from Oscar, would hope to see better from Espanol. Maybe us Valencia fans, we might hope to see worse from them. Because I don't hope to see better from them. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't want them to go down, to be fair, because yeah. they like me, they like me say Catalan derby, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well... If, if I had to choose them between them and Valencia, I'd rather Valencia stay up. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you know, you know, you know something about Espanol going down. What is that? That there becomes an open opportunity for mid-table established teams in the league. I think probably like that there, Alex Garcia. Those are players that are way better than the teams they are currently playing in. Honestly, you should also, probably get the chance. Also, we could go to yeah, Australia 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 Australia. Australia. Valencia and do a good job. <laughs> Valencia, Valencia, both of them you, go you, down. You, <laughs> oh, <no>. Oscar, stop. <laughs> hey, we're we'll, we'll being we'll be real here. This season is too weird to call. 
no, no, no. Like, like I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm slightly more confident. Seeing Valencia's calendar, maybe, maybe, maybe by the end of April, if Valencia don't win all these games that I'm counting on them winning, we'll have a different conversation here. But, but seeing yeah. the calendar, I'm slightly confident that Valencia will will do a good job stay up. Hopefully, yeah. I'm less confident about Sevilla, though, especially after what Hetafe did to them. And Oscar, you you hate some Pauli very much. You hate his lineup. You hate how he's confused and everyone. It seems like the players are confused. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you a free reign on him, man. I, can <laughs> you, no, I, I think you might need to bleep me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so based on his past lineup, you can technically count Brian Hill as a left full back of sorts. So he's playing three left full backs. Thank you. <laughs> Ocampos as a number nine. Nianzu, I think Nianzu was playing defensive midfield or something. Like, what is going on with this man? Like, <laughs> yes, you, I mean, you guys are doing all right in Europe, but is the, Nestri, based on his form this year, is a must. Like, besides Bono, you should be starting every game, and you choose not to start him. You choose not to even start the flower vase that's Rafamir. <laughs> but you start... Well, I think he wasn't Rakitic this week. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. But it, if you're Sevilla, you're, this is the international break. Is this the right time to just let him go? Because so far, it hasn't worked. There, there hasn't been that much significant improvement from Lopetegui and from him. Like, in January, I would have defended him. But since then, it, it hasn't worked out. Yeah, the away from is just terrible and... Yeah, they oh. haven't won away from home since like October, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, since mid October. And if you look at their schedule, it's like they have to play all these teams away, like Cadiz away. They have to go away to Valladolid. They have to go away to Valencia. That's not good from a Sevilla point of view if they want to survive. I can't believe we're saying. Well, at least from a La Liga fans' perspective, all three of Espanol, Valencia, and Sevilla can't go down. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's, that's what I'm rooting do, for. Do you guys think, I'm right. oh, sorry. Do you think there's a chance Sevilla win the Europa League while getting relegated? Oh, my it's God. It's possible. It, it's possible, but it's, it's improbable. Possible. <laughs> I don't... I, I think... It's it, it it be a think. hilarious... Go on, Adair. Yeah, it's hilarious. A lot of people think Sevilla might win the Europa League before, because of their issue with the Europa League. But I doubt it's because of San Paoli. Yeah. It's shady. He's a shady <laughs> type of manager. No, my, no one I want around me at all. <laughs> if anyone actually thinks Sevilla are going to win the Europa League, I'm going to, first of all, back away from them. Because they, they might... Know, though. You never know if Sevilla. I think yeah, Pauli. the argument isn't like a football argument. It's, it's not like a football. A, it's yeah. not a football-based <laughs> argument. It's an argument that you can quickly <laughs> end by showing someone the league table. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it would be a <laughs> sick <laughs> joke. It would be a sick joke if Barcelona and Betis didn't beat my United, but Sevilla do. <laughs> yeah, and then it would have to beat Juventus. I, I don't see that. Although Arsenal's out now, so I think that opens up the field because I feel like Arsenal was the best team in the competition. True, true, but but they're still Juve though. It, even if they beat Manchester United by some miracle, they're still Juve. They have to get past. So I, I don't. You are right to North Marino. Roma's in, oh on yeah, the other and there's Jose as well. Yeah, Roma's on the other path. So like to get to the final, right? They need to beat all these juggernauts, and then if you get to the final, you're playing against Roma. That's I don't know. They they need they need a miracle to stay up, and and I think maybe getting Manchester United is good for them because if they go out, they can focus on La Liga and and just keep their mindset on not going down. And with with the other relegation teams like Valencia, Espanyol, Elche, Almeria, you can see there is no quality or there is less quality. Yeah. But with Sevilla, there is quality in the team. There's obvious quality in that team. Just in the wrong hands. Yeah, you can also argue with, uh, to switch to Atafe, that there's a lot of quality in Atafe. Like, if you look at their lineup, they're like, you, you also wonder they why... They should not be in a relegation battle. 
on popular opinion, get a, get a fit attack line. Their top two would probably be one of the best in the league in another era or in another season. Yeah. True. Uh, not my era. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's all right, but Kim and Unal, they're, they're different. Like, yeah. Unal is like... Unal is like... Um, how do I put it? Unal is a filthy goal scorer. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because Unal is... is... Is a player, even on this podcast, we've discussed whether he can go to a bigger club. Like, there was a time when Atleti were in for him. Like, he's a guy I can see. I, I even wonder whether Villarreal should go for him to bring him back into the club because he would be a really good player for them. And with Hetafe, with like, I look at the squad and I'm just like, they really shouldn't be in this battle given what they have. But uh, again, it's like you might have to question Kike Sanchez Flores, but it's also a very competitive relegation battle. So, with 29 points in any other season, you'd be comfortably like, oh, we're going to survive with like two more wins or three more wins. But this season, it's, it's, you need a lot more than that. So maybe we're being too harsh on a lot of these teams. Yeah, it seems that the picture keeps changing every two weeks, too. Like, I think two weeks ago, we were worried about Hetafe, but you know, with <laughs> a couple of good home wins and eight points away at Cadiz, they're doing pretty well for themselves. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are. And the thing, though, is like, for example, if you look at Girona with 31 points, in the past, it would have been like, okay, two more wins and they're safe. Mm-hmm. But even now, if they get the two more wins, we're not, we're not sure. So. Yeah, the margins are close this year. Yeah, they're very, very close. And that's why Mbaye's mistake on, on the weekend was so costly because Cadiz had that game. I, I had I was... the three points, yeah. <laughs> I felt so sorry for him because he was crying, he was emotional, and that was a reckless tackle to make. Yeah. It was, um, I, I think you guys have said everything that they used to say. He basically put Cardis back into the relegation <laughs> scrap because with, an, with a win and the momentum they've been having, they would have been safe, which would have been bad news for Valencia or anyone else down there. But yeah. I'm happy with his mystic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, you can admit it's cruel and be happy. Just yeah. nuance. <laughs> yeah, but, but just the way like you saw him crying after you saw, uh, I was just like, this is. I think uh, he I'm... knew how big it was because like yeah. even the the substitute keeper had a great performance as well. Like it was, yeah. if they'd held mm-hmm. on, that was going to be a confidence boosting win. Yeah. You, I, you I... know, there's actually this fear I have with Cardis. I expected them to be this team that will put down no fights whatsoever, you know, in the relegation battle. Then January comes and they start bowling, even beating Valencia and Mestaya. And I'm like, oh, Valencia can get relegated now, Cadiz will survive this. Yeah. And then it becomes a real fear. Yeah, <laughs> it's not be funny, though. I remember the start of the season with six consecutive or five consecutive losses, and I had them down to go down even before Elche. And then the, the improvement is really drastic in terms of they haven't lost at home since that 4-0 Barcelona game. They've just been super consistent. And it makes me think that they wouldn't go down. Like, I, I think, again, to if we're going to, like, root for the big boys, Sevilla, Espanol, and Valencia not to go down, <laughs> the team that I think might join them is, uh, that might go down is Valladolid and Almeria. I think those are the two teams that might go down just because Almeria, they're, they're going in the wrong direction. And by the lead, um, they're going in the wrong direction, but Cal Aaron's goals might, keep, might be enough, but I'm not sure. Okay, and so with that, we're just going to look at the league table. As you can see, Barcelona, they're far and above ahead of everyone else. So Flex coming through the third, and then we have the relegation battle at the end, <laughs> which is looking like a quasi war. Lariel is what, three? Three gap on Betis on, and on the Betis, three yeah. behind Atleti, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that Betis Lareal game yeah. is going to be something that's going to be fire when it happens. It's it's still surprising to me, man. Because I, I thought Lareal had third place locked up, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we really did. There's, a, like... there's a five points difference between 16th and 12th. Yeah. Just the five point difference. Yeah, that's. 
there's a possibility Juna can get relegated this season, despite all the plaudits. Of course. No one, is, no one that's below 40 points is safe, in my opinion. <laughs> You're two bad games away from looking over your shoulder. And, and I remember two or three seasons Ex- ago when... Extending to Athletic. Yeah. <laughs> Even Osasuna, Osasuna kind of... Yeah. Os- Os- they're they're been, kind of moving a bit spooky, if you ask me. Yeah, they've been in the wrong direction. Their only win is against San Paulo Sevilla, which... <laughs> We're not we're not be so probably biggest fans in this podcast at the moment. <laughs> but yeah. And I remember that year Girona went down. It was a similar situation where they were mid table, everyone expected them to do well, and then all of a sudden they just had a crash. Yeah. I if you just look at this relegation table for a second, look at Girona and Espanol's form. Just to show you how crazy it is. Two back to back wins. And then we're like, okay, these guys look good. And then in Espanol's case, it's three losses in a row. Three losses in a row, yeah. For Girona, yeah. So it, it, a lot can change, a lot can change. But before, before we go off, let's talk about the Champions League draw. And for me, I think this is the best Champions League draw, the best Champions League um, layout in a long time. Because if you look at through the draws up until the final, it's so open. Anyone can be in the final at the moment. Like, we can have any combination in the final. And that's why I love it so much. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm 50-50. I would have loved to draw someone else besides Chelsea. <laughs> maybe, maybe keep the bracket exactly the same as it yeah. was. But maybe dr- just swap Bayern and Chelsea. I would have taken that. I think. Yeah. Well, it you think Bayern or Chelsea? Yeah, only because I'm just tired of playing... Prem teams now. I'm, so, I'm sick of it. Real Madrid might as well become a Premier League team. <laughs> and my United might as well Madrid. become a La Liga team. Oh, yeah. Oscar, what do you think about the draw? I don't care about the draw. <laughs> I did, I did. Um, it's, a, it's a really good draw if you ask me because they didn't show their bias for money and all that. Anyway. <laughs> Like you can have, like you said, you can have all sorts of combinations of teams in the final. You can't, and this time you can't have teams from the same league in the final. So yeah. I think that's pretty good. I also feel like the way teams from different leagues did in the previous rounds affected this too. Mm. All in all, I think we can get pretty a pretty interesting final this time, and lots of teams have a good chance to win this. Yeah. Yeah. Adira? Mm, I think the draw is the best that, anyone, that we can get at this point in time and and it's very exciting, you know. Madrid or Chelsea get to face Bayern or City, Milan, Napoli, Inter, Benfica, and the underdog story of Benfica, you know, they, they, might, they can they can get to the final. Yeah. So it's it's not really an underdog story because they're a big club in their own rights, but then you get what I mean? Long time yeah. and yeah, I get what you mean because I've been I've been super hot on Benfica like right from the get go, and I was really impressed with how they did against PSG in both legs. I think I think Inter will test them, but I I do think they're call me crazy, but I do think they're a better team than Inter Milan at the moment in terms of. Inter I, I, I agree with you. They are. Yeah. I agree with you. They are. Inter is on Inter is on a really poor form. You are put it that way. They lost to Spezia recently. I think this um yesterday night they lost to Jury. Yeah. Lost to Spezia recently, lost to Jury, you know. Jury against Porto in the, in the Champions League, although it was in their favor. But I think Benfica riding high currently, scoring a lot of goals in almost every match they play, scored three post goals in every match they play right now. And it's a bit difficult test for Inter, you know. Yeah. But then I think the oh more established team factor, but then I don't know about the surprise. Yeah. And so right now, guys, gun to your head. Who's gonna be in the final? Why well, Napoli. Know. Napoli? Napoli and who? Napoli and Bayern. Napoli and Bayern. Interesting. Oscar. Benfica versus Chelsea final where Benfica dunk on Enzo Fernandez. <laughs> I'll be there no matter what. <laughs> okay, I'm nah, not joking. No, but for real though, like like you said, I feel like Benfica in a better moment than the two Milan clubs. So if they get past Napoli, they're going to be in the final. 
final. And they'll have the opportunity to break that curse. Yeah. But um on the but I do think Napoli they do the final is on that side is Napoli or Benfica. Yeah. I'll just edge towards Napoli. As for the other side. Um right now I'd say even though their league form is kind of somehow I'd say Bayern. Bayern, yeah. But that city trashing of Frankfurt. Oh, sorry. Why did I say Frankfurt? What's your Leipzig. I'm sorry. Leipzig. A lot of German teams got Frankfurt. German teams are <laughs> German fans are going to hate me now. <laughs> yeah, you, you, did you did you predict uh, your close prediction? Stop right? this! <laughs> <laughs> like a couple of I did a watch party with some friends and they were roasting me when I said Leipzig would win. And the, throughout the map, they forced me to watch the whole game. <laughs> I was like, God. Yeah, but. I know City had this team of like they really wall up into someone in the round of 16 and then when they face a serious team in the quarterfinals, they go out. Yeah, okay. right now, I think, I think the finals will come from Bayern City. Because mm-hmm. Alan just reminded us that the guy's different. Yeah. Yeah. And Taps, you already said Real Madrid and Milan. <laughs> Yeah, my heart, my heart wants Milan Madrid. Uh, my brain says Napoli Bayern. Napoli Bayern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll agree with that. But it's just my heart wants Bayern, Benfica, and Benfica winning it. But <laughs> honestly, I want the winner to come from Benfica and Napoli's bracket. Yeah, a Damian club is fine with me. But you know what? I, I feel we're being slightly unfair to Bayern, though. I know they're a big team. And they're like they win all the time, so like all oh, poor Bayern Munich. But you get a group with Inter and Barcelona. You get the quarterfinal with PSG. You get to play City in this. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now nah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you have to grind, bro. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes the path is not easy. Yeah, I, I don't know if whooping everyone can be called grinding, but yeah, yeah, Bayern are really doing well this season. The only teams I've scored against them in the Champions League is Victoria Pilsen. So, yeah. I'll say they're the favorite. Yeah. Adira? We're probably underrating Milan. Milan? But probably is not underrated. Probably they're, they're recent form says it all. But then, might be a surprise against Napoli for that matter. Yeah, because Napoli, there's probably a question that, that Barcelona is sort of in, but they're not in Europe, obviously, where it's like the league is wrapped up or. and. Yeah. They can fully relax while Milan, they're still in a top four sort of battle in Serie A. Yeah. yeah. Napoli's running away with the league. Everyone else is just fighting to drop out of top four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fact that you will, with a 15 point gap, <laughs> can easily be in a top four very soon is just crazy. And yeah. they could get the 15 points back. If, yeah. if it gets overturned, then what? <laughs> <laughs> if they get the 15 points back right now, they'll have 60. Okay, Napoli will still be too far, but yeah. they'll comfortably be second. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of UB, should we transition quickly to our the other, the, the ugly duckling of Europe, the Europa League? Uh, UV, they have Sporting Lisbon, who shocked Arsenal. And uh, Manchester United have Sevilla. We have the old, we have the Conference League final replay with Roma Feyenoord. So it's a pretty good ties. And Leverkusen playing against uh, Union Saint Gilois, where they're going by the owners of Brighton apparently with this Belgian team. So it'll be very interesting in the Europa League. Who do we see in the final and who's going to win? Roma wins it for me. Roma? Oh, that's, that's big. Yeah, the Moreno factor. The Moreno factor. I'll say the Moreno factor. Actually, well, you know, I remember. Mourinho versus yeah, the Shabby Alonso. Was basically... If Levy Le- Le- yeah. doesn't get to Mourinho versus Shabby Alonso, that would be really interesting. Well, I remember last last season, yeah, on a particular episode, yeah, where we mentioned um, Union St. Gloire and their form and their uprising, you know, from from second division and battling for Europe then. And I remember, you know, yeah, never crossed my mind that at that point in time that they'll probably be in the, be in the quarterfinals <laughs> of the Europa League. And it's like a very, very nice story, you know. Even defeating Union Berlin, what would be a bigger opposition for them. Yeah. It's, it's very, very good. Sort of yeah, very good. Yeah. But one thing that's striking me, that's striking me though, is that my United can defeat three Spanish teams <laughs> on their way to the semi final. 
it's not looking good for the Spanish league. It's not looking yeah. good for La Liga. I don't really care about that. No, yeah. I mean, my United are not the yeah. bad time my United they used to be, to be fair to them. Yeah. They're actually, 7 nil aside, they're actually a serious team now. They're taking back revenge. Isn't they had a very poor record against this man? Yeah, it was not funny. <laughs> now they're just revenging. But, uh, yeah. I, well, I think I just I just expected I expected Barca to defeat them, you know, to just eliminate them, you know. It was surprising for me. If Ronaldo was still there with the walk, then he, him leaving just <laughs> removed all the toxicity. <laughs> yeah. But but like who's who's gonna make the final then on that side of bracket I grew up? Uh, Roma Man United. Roma Man United. Mm, yeah. They call Oscar. I see. If I see Rome, I see Juve actually winning this team. Yeah. But for I'd have said Man United will get to the final, but either way, a former virus in the <laughs> Man United dressing room in Pablo Mourinho will be down doing so. I'm just going to say Juve. And then Juve Roma, all Italian final. Yeah, it's very, very good for the Italian teams this season, actually. Mm-hmm. I think six of your teams are still in Europe, which is incredible. Caps? I think Sporting Roma with Sporting to win it. Damn. Caps yeah. here with. That's bold. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, nice. nice. that's purely on the bias of Ruben Amorio. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. Benfica and Sporting winning both competitions will be. <laughs> I'd love to see it. I can't lie. Yeah, we'd we'll love to see that. Like, like for me, I think it's going to be Juve Roma. I, but I think Juve is going to take it. That's just my call. But anyways, with that, uh, we're going to end it end it off. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Taps, for being a special guest. We thanks for insight. having me. Adura as well. It's nice to have another Valencia buddy on the on the podcast. So we can discuss things that are. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Oscar, as usual. Yeah, I'll see you after the international break. I'm guessing. All right. Yeah, 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 we'll see you then. And listeners, uh, thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please remember to give us a like and share. And we'll be back after the international break. Adios.